Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. Season 1 for Black Ops Cold War has been out for a little bit now, and I think we've all had a pretty good chance to start digesting that content, which can pretty much be summarized as two game modes, one now and one later, and then some other kind of quality of life changes and little bits and pieces that have been thrown in alongside. Now today, I want to dive into a topic that I've seen discussed in my comment sections and on Twitter, etc., on Reddit, and that's, is this actually enough content? Or are we going to end up in a massive drought now until we do get our next map in season two sometime in February. Before we jump in, I want to quickly share a word from today's sponsors, Asus ROG. They sent me a load of new stuff recently to upgrade my setup with, and because of that, I've talked about it a bunch on the channel. Really grateful to them, and the stuff that they sent is super good quality. The build quality is lovely, and I'm really enjoying using all of it, especially actually the ROG Strix Impact 2 wireless mouse. I've never actually had a wireless mouse before, and it's super freeing when I'm playing games. It's awesome. So if any of this stuff looks like something you might want to pick up for yourself, there are links in the description. And remember to use the code on screen for money off at checkout. Thank you, Asus, for sponsoring the channel and making it possible for me to make the content that I do. Appreciate you guys. Let's get on with the rest of the video now, though. The way I see it, there are two sides to look at this from. One being the side that thinks that this just isn't enough content and that Zombies players are kind of getting left behind compared to MP. And the other side being the one that's just kind of content to be patient and wait for the new stuff to come when it's ready. These viewpoints obviously completely oppose one another, but we should still be civil about this, guys. This video is definitely only intended to be constructive critique and discussion about the topic and not an incentive for people to start raising their pitchforks and throwing tomatoes at Treyarch HQ. None of that, guys. Let's keep it nice and friendly because at the end of the day, we are all fans of the mode and I think all of us just want it to succeed. We just have differing viewpoints on how we think it would be best to do that. So with that said, what do I think? Well, <laughs> in my personal opinion, speaking strictly for myself, I don't think there's anything that's been announced for season one that is a really compelling reason to keep me playing zombies all the way through this season until we get to season two. And I don't think this because the game's bad by any means. Like, let me be absolutely clear about that. I think that the fundamental mechanics of zombies this year are some of the strongest we've ever seen in a zombies mode. And I'm talking like the greatest of the greats. This game does so much so well and it is so satisfying in a combination that is really truly remarkable seeing as, and this is an important point, Treyarch had less time to create zombies this year than I think any other previous iteration of the mode, bar maybe like World at War, but that was a weekend project, so it doesn't really count. It was a two-year cycle this year instead of a three, and previous two-year cycles way back in the day didn't have the extent of post-launch content that they had to support like they did with Black Ops 4. And so you end up with this crazy situation where the dev cycle got shortened and they had more stuff to do in that shortened dev time for the previous game. And so the fact that the fun fundamentals of this new one are so solid is really worth applauding. Full stop. That has to be said. And yet, even though I understand all of that, I still feel like there just isn't enough to do right now as a Zombies player. So what the hell's going on? If you look back to Black Ops 3, which I think a lot of people in the community hold as their favorite Zombies game to date, you had Shadows of Evil on launch, and then you had the side bonus map, The Giant. The game came out at a similar date in its release year to Cold War, and so presumably it's going to have a similar DLC release schedule, even though we've now got seasonal content as opposed to the season pass that we had for that game in the past. The thing that I think is tempting to say is, man, it felt like Black Ops 3 had so much more content at launch. But really, like realistically, guys, I probably played the giant like three times. Like, I don't think I replayed the giant over and over again. And I mean, maybe I'm in the minority here. Maybe you guys played it a bunch as well. But to me, the fact that there wasn't a side map this year is not a huge deal. Like, I don't think that if there was the giant in Cold War, I would suddenly feel like I had all the content that I possibly wanted. And so then you could say, well, what if there was an actual full map as opposed to just a side map? Like, where is the voyage to my nine right now? And this is a nuanced one, man. Like, you've got to give this one some thought because... If the question is, is the season one content offering good enough for zombies? And if you judge that to be a no, based on the fact that there is only one map right now and there's no new map in season one, I think you may be completely dismissing the fact that the world's been upside down this year. It's been totally topsy-turvy. Treyarch are working from home. It's a total change from what they're used to. And they've also had that shortened dev cycle I already mentioned. So already you've got circumstances that are going to make it much harder for them to just churn out maps like there's no tomorrow. On top of that, you've got this thing that I don't have a name for. I haven't read this in a paper. I haven't got like a technical term for it. But I really strongly believe it has permeated every single gaming community 
community out there over the last, let's say, sort of three years or so, and it's running riot, and it's really hard to keep up with, and that's that players of video games these days now consume content faster than they ever have done before. Let's call it Milo's Hungry Player Theory, right? Back in the day, World at War, you get your first zombies map, and you're like, whoa, mind blown, crazy experience, really awesome stuff. You play it again and again and again and again. You sit in that corner, buy that little tin of beans on the floor, jumping into that glitch spot by the grenades and try and get desperately to round 30. You die at 24, you do it all over again. It's an incredible experience and it feels so good. And then the years start coming and they don't stop coming. You get to DE and the map design's stunning. You're still a happy player and you're still having fun, but each new map goes faster than the last one. That's my hungry player theory. <laughs> So you end up in this cycle, right? Where you want more zombies maps because you love playing zombies, but you chew through new zombies maps faster than you ever have done before each time you get one. And so Treyarch need to accelerate the pace that they make maps at, but then each map that comes out means that you chew through the next one even faster. You end up in clearly a vortex of completely unsatisfiable demand for new stuff. And if we want to point fingers about where this has come from, I think some people would say it's Fortnite's fault, right? The fact that they've had their devs in permanent crunch since launch, pumping out new content week after week after week for that game is something that the rest of the industry cannot match and yet it is now the new bar and so anything below that is not good enough and so all devs are lazy and everything is not fun and it's too slow and it isn't good enough to answer that question that I posed at the start of the video. And it may well be that some aspect of that is powering this hunger phenomenon but there's also the fact that the internet exists and that is totally a factor too. You could hide something in a game 10 years ago and it would propagate around that that game's community a lot more slowly because the infrastructure of the internet and the people spreading the news, the people live streaming, even just the number of people playing games was a lot lower back then. And so in the same way that people talk about power creep in video games where you just kind of endlessly get more and more strong but it never actually meaningfully goes anywhere, we have a kind of similar thing going on in the way that we consume these games. We've got consumption creep where our appetites just get ever bigger but the amount of stuff that is able to be created in a given window of time doesn't necessarily scale at that same rate. And I know there are people in the comments that are going to say, no, they're just lazy devs. But dude, I've spoken to these people, okay? <laughs> like, I really have conversations with developers all the time. I take part in early feedback sessions with all sorts of games, not just your Call of Duties, but all sorts of developers from all over the place. And I help consult essentially on how to make their games better. And let me tell you, I have never met a lazy dev in my life. Ever. I just don't think that that is the right way to kind of approach this whole thing. Have I seen instances where publishers are full of absolute dinosaurs that don't deserve their jobs and they're enforcing loads of silly rules that force the game into a spot where it ends up being bad to try and basically please their investors, but they're actually out of touch with their player base? Yes, I mean, that might sound like something that you can apply to multiple different games in the industry right now, and it would be bang nail on head. And a lot of the time, the people at the top of the food chain, so that's the top project managers or the creative directors and things like that, they might be responsible for certain aspects of the game being bad as well. Don't get me wrong, sometimes people make bad products. But to say that the kind of base level devs are lazy just doesn't make sense, okay? It just doesn't make sense. And I've fallen into the trap in the past of thinking that this was the case. Don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect, but I know better now, and so I just wanted to give you guys that kind of insight from my perspective here. So if this consumption creep is unstoppable and the devs are working as hard as they can, what can we suggest as a player base to point the devs in a direction where they can make stuff that is going to keep us happy and move us away from this feeling that I've got right now, at least, and maybe some of you guys do as well, which is that I don't feel compelled to play zombies until we get a new map in season two. Well, game modes is a great start, and I respect the hell out of Treyarch for making Jingle Hells a thing. It is the first time that we've had a thematic event like this in zombies, and we've actually had some form of parity with the sort of thing that MP gets. So, so that is phenomenal. The fact that it exists is progress. However, turning off the Easter egg basically turns off my interest in the map when the only changes are a couple of visual things here and there and that's it. It's essentially a one and done. Will Cranked be any better? Well, maybe. It is the sort of thing that has a lot more potential to totally change the zombies formula into something that is really fun and makes me want to play multiple times. But if the Easter egg is turned off and they strip out a load of other features that are really the heart of zombies, 
it's just gonna feel like playing cranked against bots in an MP private match. Like, why would that be something that you would prioritize playing over just playing zombies if you're a zombies fan? It'll be different, but I don't anticipate it to change the world. What about survival? We've had rumors that Narked survival is gonna be coming to Cold War. That's something that I think could really motivate people to jump back in for a little bit longer. I think that survival is a much more attractive thing because the whole prestige of getting to high rounds and getting those world records and stuff like that comes back all at once. And so that's something that I do think would buff things out a bit. And I would expect something like a survival to be a reasonably straightforward thing to implement on an already made map compared to just making a whole new map in the first place. And so I'd be really hopeful to see survival maps for every map that we get this year littered through our seasonal content. I think that that would help us a lot. I also think if they're gonna do more modes in future, just do what the community's asking and give us grief. Like, just do it, literally. There's no point in trying to experiment with all these new modes, in my opinion, when you haven't done grief yet. Do grief first, give the people what they want. If no one plays it, then you've got the last laugh, Treyarch, because you've been telling us that all along by not making the damn thing. Make it, see if people like it, see if people vibe with it, see if all the feedback that you've got that people want grief is actually true in reality. I think that that would be a good experiment, surely. Treyarch also has this crazy huge feature in the game that is designed to keep us playing all year long, and that's the camo unlock system. The way it works is good enough, I suppose, but the fact that we cannot track these things in the game is a massive issue. I'm gonna keep shouting this from the rooftops till the cows come home, because for some reason it doesn't even seem to be on Treyarch's radar, I don't know why, but Treyarch, let us somehow activate a certain challenge as our tracked challenge. Let's say it's getting a certain camo on a certain weapon, and then have that as a toggleable HUD element that we we can choose to have on or off and then we can always use that as a really easy reference to see what our progress is on that given challenge. It is insane to me that this is only in the menus right now and it's just terrible for quality of life and I think every player that's going for headshots for their challenges and stuff like that would agree a better way to track that while you're playing would mean there'd be so much less friction in the experience of grinding for camos and it would mean that people would be more likely to grind for the camos in the first place and thus keep playing the game which is what the system is designed for. So it's a win-win. Your system's there, Treyarch. You just got to incentivize people to use it by making their lives easier. You've also got this awesome system of weapon customization in the loadouts, right? But the war guns in each map have randomized attachments. What if we had weapon kits like a BO3 sort of style system where we could customize the attachments of all the war guns as well to make sure that not only were we spawning in with a gun that was customized to our liking, but we could actually modify the map a little bit in our own way to be tuned to our playstyle as well. I can't think of a single person that plays the game and gets a gun off the wall and goes, oh drat, it's got different attachments to what I thought and so it's gonna drastically change this play session and make it feel different to the last game I played. No, I'm still gonna use my loadout weapon until round 30 anyway, most likely, and I'm still probably gonna get a ray gun at round 30 and then never think about the wall weapons ever again. And so whether or not the Diamati off the wall in Narcturan Toten comes akimbo or not makes no difference to me, but if I could customize it, then maybe it would make a difference, it might be usable for strats, etc., and give the game a little bit more depth. I also think more depth to the skills in the game would be fantastic. The fact that those things exist right now is amazing and it does lead to some really innovative, cool strategies when you unlock them and that's great. But we got crystals so fast that people that were really grinding on launch pretty much maxed out their skill trees in the first week or so. And I think it would be really smart to have tiers four and five be harder to get to. And so yes, as a community, we would have to look at that and say, I'm gonna have to invest more time if I wanna unlock these, but the rewards should then be much better and they should be really strong and something that would transform the gameplay experience, etc., so that they were attractive and worth grinding for. But I think expanding those trees is pretty much essential for the rest of the year. Another one that might come as a little bit of a surprise, but I actually think Treyarch needs a zombies community manager of some kind. Literally someone to just say something related to zombies or just keep the player base informed about changes and stuff like that every week or so, because we used to have Blundell. He didn't used to be on Twitter, but he did used to keep us updated about various things and interviews and what have you. And nowadays, there's sort of no one to look to as the head of the mode. I know Corky is probably in charge, but Corky is totally AWOL. There is no way of contacting that man. And so we're kind of left like, hey, I mean, is anyone here like actually talking to us zombies players? It really doesn't feel like it. And if you want to go back even further, you did also used to have people like Riza El Ghazi, Jimmy Zielinski, uh, Peter Livingston, all those sorts of folks that worked on zombies 
they've all gone now. None of them work on zombies anymore. But they used to every now and then tweet out stuff that was related to zombies and it just cultivated the community. It gave people stuff to talk about in those down periods. It meant that there wasn't just literal radio silence with general stability and fixes and improvements. Like that's been said a million times in all the patches now, but it just feels like it's a bit empty sometimes and I'd really like that vacuum to be filled. I also think that Treyarch needs to have a think about the way that leaks are affecting the game and I want to be clear here. I get it. I've said my stance on leaks this year is that I'll cover the leaks when they happen because I feel like if they're in the game, then they're going to end up getting talked about anyway. But Treyarch needs to realize that as a creator, if I'm looking at a leak and I'm like, okay, I don't know if this is something that I can talk about without potentially getting like a strike from Activision because it's leaked content, but it's story info and other people are talking about it and I want to talk about it on my channel. It puts me in an impossible position because I either put my channel at risk in order to make the content and get excited about this new story stuff, or I wait, other people cover it and put their channels at risk, and then I'm three weeks late when the season does actually start and the intel comes out for real. It's a really imbalanced way of doing things, and again, there is no blame on the leakers here in my opinion. It's solely on the fact that the intel is so easily accessed in the game files so early before it's meant to be there. And it's meant that there's been a lot of intel from this new season that I've just not been inspired to cover just genuinely. As a fan of zombies, I've looked at it and gone, I mean, these guys have all covered this weeks ago and I wanted to, but I wasn't sure if I was going to get a strike and like, what do I do? It's a really awkward one for me and I know that this doesn't affect the whole community, but at the same time, I do think a lot of people follow the zombie storyline through me, like literally through the videos that I make. And I'm not saying that to be big headed, I'm just saying that I think I'm the biggest zombies story creator out there right now and as such, if I'm kind of feeling almost stifled in making certain zombie story videos, then it might be something that Treyarch or Activision might might want to take a look at just to see if they can make that process any smoother for us. So overall then, with all of those points considered, is season one good enough for Zombies players? Well, for me, it would be good enough if I was compelled to come back and play more throughout the season, and I'm not compelled, so it isn't good enough. But at the same time, there is this weird duality where it's good enough in the sense that Treyarch have done as good a job, I think, as they could have done in making that season one content, and the only thing to do now is to learn from what they've done and improve on it in the future if they can, and if they can manage it with the conditions that the world is in right now with the current kind of global situation of, I mean, everything. 2020 has been a madness, so... I'm going to wrap up here because I could go on and on with feedback from Treyarch, but I think the things I've mentioned are some of the most important. What's up to you guys now is to let Treyarch know your thoughts in the comments down below. And what I'm probably going to do is make one big video in a couple of weeks, which is going to be like everything wrong with Cold War Zombies, but also everything they need to do to fix it and make it better for all of us. I think that a massive constructive criticism video like that would probably go down really well. And so if you start getting those ideas flowing in the comments now, I might include those in the video and give you guys a shout out. Bear that in mind. Thanks for watching. Drop a like if you've enjoyed. Bye for now.